Hi guys, welcome back. So today's video is a highly requested video. Um, it is comparing my husband's autosomal DNA test results, which is his ethnicity DNA test results, and comparing that to what his family tree says. Um, so to make things easy on myself, I went to two websites that actually kind of map or chart my husband's um, family tree. So these websites pretty much say, hey, this is how many ancestors were born in the United States. Here's how many ancestors were born in Sweden. This is how many ancestors were born in um, Ireland or whatever country. And it kind of gives me a percentage of how much that would be of his. This is not saying that this is his ethnicity because obviously if you live in one country, you're probably that ethnicity, but you're not always that ethnicity. Um, also, at the same time, my husband has ancestors who've lived in the United States for as long as the United States has been discovered. He also has Native American roots, which is also going to be considered um, United States, but not be say, hey, he's Native American, or say, hey, he's the white man from, you know, the United States. These websites do not tell us exactly what his ethnicity is. It's just telling us that, hey, this is probably your ethnicity due to what's, due to where your ancestors were born. DNA test results are going to be more accurate of what his true ethnicity is. The first website that I went to that mapped out my husband's um, ancestors' birthplaces or homeland is called rootmapper.com. So this is a really cool website that works with family search um, and it will pull up, you'll give it permission to connect to your family search tree. Then it will pull information from your family search tree and put it on this cute little map showing you where your ancestors were born. And then some countries will be a darker like reddish color saying that you have more ancestries born in that country. And then some will be anywhere between that red to that yellow saying there's less and less of that ancestor born in that country. And then there's a spot on the side where you can see a statistic report saying, hey, so hey, here's the percentage of how many were born in the United States or how many were born in the United Kingdom or Ireland or whatever. So the next site I went to is called Pedigree Pi. This is also another website that works with family search. So you, once again, you give them permission to look at your family search tree. It pulls information from your family search tree to make this pie chart that shows you by color coding it where your ancestors were born. So off to the side of the pie chart, it will show you a box that says percentages of how many ancestors were born once again in the United States, England, Denmark, Scottish Wales, whatever. So what Pedigree Pi also can do is it will actually fill in the blanks. So if you have ancestors that you never plugged in on your family tree, you never knew who your six-time great-grandparent was or where they were born, it will guess what your ancestors' birthplace is. Or you can hit the extrapolate button and then it will get rid of their guesses. I've already gone ahead and got rid of the guessing part, so now there's black parts on my husband's um, pie chart. And so I actually have a section that's going to say unknown on pedigree pie. Sorry, I won't get to know the birthplace of all of my husband's ancestors, um, just because he doesn't have a full family tree. I'm sorry he doesn't have a full family tree. I have been working on that for years eight years and I still have not gotten it full. I would love to do that one day, but at this current point in time, he doesn't have a full family tree. So both of these uh, websites that map and make a pie chart of my husband's family tree, they are only going back eight generations. Um, it's just as far back as they go as eight generations. Um, so once again, we will not be able to get a full result off of those because we can only go back eight generations versus, versus a DNA test result can actually go back way further. <laughs> um, so I guess let's get comparing. So first up I have here is, is Ancestry.com. So right here in this big beautiful white box is my husband's uh, DNA test results. 
So over here on the top left corner, I have the pedigree pie percentages. And then down here on the bottom, I have the percentages for root mapper. So now you can do a side by side comparison while I'm talking to you guys. Um, so we can cancel out United States on both pedigree pie and roots mapper because I don't know what that entitles. I don't know if they're saying, hey, these are people who are Native American or they're whatever ethnicity that United States has. <laughs> um, we have a lot of ethnicities here in the United States. So I don't know if they're talking about my husband's Mexican family members or his white family members, which I don't even know what country they come from before America, or um, his Native American family. Um, so you might just want to cancel out the United States. Um, same with pedigree pie up here. They have an unidentified section. Um, it's the third one down. You might just want to also cancel that out and ignore that. Because once again, I don't know what that entails because that's ancestors who I've not put in on his family tree or not know where their birthplace is. So I don't know what their ethnicity is or where their birthplace is. I don't even know who they are. The first up for pedigree pie is England and then first up for roots mapper is the United Kingdom. Which once again, the United Kingdom here is considered all of this island right here. In. This is all of the United Kingdom, so that's Wales, Scottish, and England. So, kind of have to do Great Britain and part of this Scottish Wales area and factor those in together to get the United Kingdom for Roots Mapper. Yeah, this is why ethnicity is so crazy. So, sorry that there's the two different borders on those two. That's just kind of how these companies work. Um, but Pretty much, they're really close. Pedigree Pie is only 2% off, and Roots Mapper is 3% off, 3.5% off, but then again, we need to calculate some of the Scottish, Scotland and Wales. The next is Swedish and Danish for both of them, um, which will be considered Scandinavian. Pedigree Pie calculates that to being about 19%, 20%, so once again, that's only 2% off. Um, Roots Mapper, it says 12 for Sweden and 11 for Denmark. So if you add those together, that's 23%. A little high, but not too far off. Then next we have unknown for pedigree pie, which once again, you can just ignore the unknown because well, they're unknown. The next for both of them is Mexico, which I guess that would be part of my husband's Native American and part of his Spain area. So you'll have to add those together because Mexico is technically Spaniards who came over and bred with Native Americans. So I don't know. You guys can decipher that one however you want. Then next on Roots Mapper, we have British Colonies of America, which once again, you could probably just ignore that one. Know what they mean by British Colonies. I don't know if they mean that's the natives who were there, the Latinos who were native, natives there, or the white people who came over. And then next after that is Scottish and Wales for Pedigree Pie, which just do the Scottish and Wales right here. Um, Scotland and Wales, so that's kind of off. It's actually a lot off. Um, and then root mappers, they have Ireland, which once again is really off. But this is why it's hard to compare what's on your family tree versus your DNA test results. But we'll keep chugging along and figuring this all out. So next on company-wise, living DNA. So living DNA kind of has a really weird setup. So they actually factor into four main groups um, that they classify as global, and then you can go more in depth by going to regional, or even more in depth by going sub-regional. 
I think sub-regional will go too far in depth because as you can see here with England, there's so many little smaller areas that I think it just goes too far in depth. And global is just too vague that I think we'll stick with regional and compare. Oh no, I'm gonna let you guys just decide. I'm gonna probably do the global, but you guys still can pause and probably do the regional look real quick right now. Um, but I think I'm gonna just talk about the global. So once again, right up here at the top corner um, is pedigree pie, and right underneath that is root mapper. And you can cancel out the United States unidentified and unknowns, because once again, we don't know what those entail. Um, so they say England, and we're gonna have to do England, Swedish, Denmark, Scottish, and Wales, and combine all those together to get Europe. Because this is Sweden, this is Danish, or other way around. I think this is actually Denmark in this. And then we have Scotland, Ireland, England, Wales over here. So that's kind of all of them. We would have to add all those together to get that percentage, and I'm not gonna do the math right now. Um, but then again, part of the Europe is gonna have to be factored in my husband's Mexican. Once again, Spain came over to the United States, Mexico area, and bred with the natives to get Latino culture. So, they say 5.5% for the Native American, which will part of that will have to factor for the Mexico. Yep. And then also there's no Asia and Africa because I don't know where that is in my husband's family tree. But every DNA test result says he has Asian and African in him. I just don't know where that is in the family tree, so we can't compare those. <laughs> so next up is 23andMe. And 23andMe goes way in depth, <laughs> way, way, way in depth. They um, have so many sub-regions. Um, but they do group it into main regions and then sub-regions. So once again, up here in the top right corner is Pedigree Pi, and right underneath that is Root Mapper. And once again, cancel out the United States, the um, unidentified and unknowns, because we don't know what that entails. They have British and Irish, which technically, um, if you look close enough, that entails um, Scotland and Wales and Ireland and England. So we'll want to factor Scotland and Wales in. So for pedigree pie, it says 26 for e England. We'll also want to factor in Scottish and Wales, which will probably round it up to being 31-ish percent, which is pretty close. Um, for Roots Mapper, it already says the United Kingdom is 31 and a half. So if we actually factor in Ireland, it makes that 31.7 percent, which both of those are actually pretty close to what um, Ancestry 23 has. Then they have French and Germany, which don't have on my um, pedigree pie or roots mapper. Then we have the Scandinavian area, which would be the Swedish and Denmark. They say is 9.9, .9, which neither one of the pedigree pie or roots mapper comes close because pedigree pie is like 20%, it's 19% point something something. And then for Roots Mapper, it says it's 23%. Um, then we have the Native American, which once again, that's going to have to be part of Europe and part of America. Eat your Mexico. So I don't know how you guys want to do that one. I still can't figure out how we're going to do Mexico. You guys can figure out how you want to do Mexico. And if we keep scrolling down, we have Africa and Asia. Once again, it's not shown on my husband's family tree. Every DNA company says he has African and 
information in him. I cannot find that on the family tree. So next is my heritage, and they have theirs in pretty decent sized groups um, with little itty bitty or subgroups. So this one should be a lot easier. Um, once again, in the top right corner is going to be pedigree pi, and underneath that will be roots mapper. And once again, you're going to have to factor out the United States, unidentified and unknowns, because, well, we don't know what those entail. So my heritage is kind of weird. They actually start off saying that he's 43% Scandinavian. If we click into that, it is actually just Danish, Sweden, and Norway. Oh, gosh, I forgot about Norway. Now I feel dumb. I thought this was Denmark. I messed up. I apparently need to go back and learn my, where my countries are. Um, which is higher than any other DNA test company and also higher than what we have on than our percentages. Because we have, once again, like 20% for pedigree pi and about 23% for roots mapper, which is half of what they're saying on his DNA test results. Um, then they don't have England. I'm guessing they're actually factoring into the Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. Yeah. Oh. Well, they don't even, so they're not even factoring the England. Wow, they're not even factoring England. That's crazy. Um, so for the Irish, Scottish, and Wells, they're saying that's 34%. So, so for pedigree pie, we're going to have to take part of England and then do the Scottish and Wells, which once again is not even equal to half of what they have. And for Roots Mapper, if we do Ireland's Ireland and part of the United Kingdom, that still equals like not even half of what they have. I don't even know where they put in England. I am so confused about where they put in England. And they have Jewishism, part of Europe and Spain, so we'll need to factor that in for Mexico along with the Central America, which I don't even know how you guys want to do the math on that. And then once again, we have Africa and Asia, which isn't found on my husband's family tree, but like I said before, is in every DNA test results. So there you go, I have now compared my husband's autosomal DNA test results or ethnicity test results to what is on his family tree. And we have found out that pretty much my heritage is off by like a lot. Uh, living DNA is harder to compare the two um, because they have so many other regions than pedigree pi or Roots Mapper has different regions, so that's kind of hard to compare. But Ancestry and 23andMe were actually the closest to having what is compared to my husband's family tree. Minus Mexico, because we can't figure out how to factor that in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and it was very informative, and it helped you guys figure out which, um, which DNA company you want to go with. Um, if you guys also want more information about any of these DNA companies, I have done videos about each one of them and comparing them all together. Um, I'll leave links to those videos in the description box below. So hopefully those videos can also help you decide which DNA company you'll want to work with. Um, I will also be doing another video of comparing just the autosomal or ethnicity DNA test results of all four companies minus the family tree. Um, and I'll leave that video when it's completed in the description box below. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. If you guys have any suggestions on anything else I should film, please also comment below. And I hope you all have a beautiful week. Bye.